Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Steve Miller and I am the founder and creator of Fatnosis. And in this video, what I want to talk about is how you can manage menopause symptoms. So let me just explain how this is going to work. It's going to be very informal. And what I want to do during the, uh, this presentation in this video is to demonstrate some of the um, hypnotic techniques that you can use to help you to manage the symptoms. Okay. And of course, this video is complementary to any medical uh, support and intervention that you're receiving right now. So let's crack on. Let's get some slides going. Well, first of all, here we go. Managing menopause. There are three things that I want to cover in this video. The first one is I want to talk about nutritional recommendations. And just let you know that in this video, I'm going to talk about solutions. I'm not going to be talking about the background. I'm not going to be talking about medical kind of related stuff. I'm going to be talking about solutions, evidence-based solutions. So that's the first one, nutritional recommendations. The second bit that I want to talk about is mood management techniques. These are techniques that will help you to be able to manage uh, your mood during the during menopause, experiencing menopause symptoms, so that um, you keep it uh, lifted, keep your mood lifted. And thirdly, what I want to talk about is evidence based an evidence based process to help you manage hot flashes and flush moments. At the end of the presentation, what I'll also do uh, in the video is talk about um, an aspirational hypnosis, aspirational technique that you can use to give you the absolute confidence that you're going to get through this, that you're going to move forward and the best years are to come. So those are the three areas that, that I want to talk through. Let's turn to nutritional recommendations, first of all. So by um, conclude, the, these are concluded from the research that we did and, and I did with the team. Foods to increase fiber are your first area. OK, so we're talking about examples such as pears, strawberries, chickpeas and sweet potatoes. Uh, foods to contain zinc, eggs, seeds, nuts, dark chocolate. And the reason I'm listing these is because what I want you to do is I want you to think of your intake right now. And I want you to make careful adjustments um, over the over the course of the weeks ahead so that you can actually look after your nutrition um, a little bit more, maybe. Foods containing magnesium, such as spinach, avocados, tofu and bananas. Foods with vitamin C, such as oranges, we all know that, kale and yellow peppers and miscellaneous foods that I found can support are is, uh, chicken, lentils and soybeans. So just to reiterate, nutrition is important. It's an important part of managing menopause symptoms. And these are a selection. I didn't want to throw heaps and heaps and heaps of nutritional information in front of you. But what I want you to do is I want you to just reflect and I want you to take um, take note and think about what can you do right now to increase, perhaps increase your fiber, increase uh, foods containing zinc, in increase foods containing magnesium, increase foods uh, with vitamin C and uh, maybe those miscellaneous foods as well, just to help you. So make sure that you reflect and adjust as, as um, appropriate. I want to now turn to mood management techniques because over 20 years of supporting people with weight management and managing menopause symptoms, what I what I found very quickly was this can become a real issue for many people. And it's understandable because it's very, very challenging. So I want to talk through three of the recommendations. Obviously, there's many, but there's, there's, I want to talk through three of the recommendations. The first one, as you can see, is write it, talk it, dump it. Now, what do I mean by that? This is a therapeutic intervention that helps you to... I would say, dissociate negative mood uh, because and, and it's it's based on releasing the feelings that you're experiencing in relation to that mood that are triggering that mood. And the way to do this is to, as it says here, write it or to or talk it or both and dump it. And the one important thing, the, the one really important thing 
is that you do release it. And I guess that's what I'm saying in this first one. And certainly in Fat Gnosis Prime, my um, my academy, uh, little name drop there. But in Fat Gnosis Prime, what I encourage people to do is with this in this particular with this particular topic is to um, in terms of their moving forward and managing is to do just that is that they write it in the academy. They talk about it if they need to um, and they and they have an avenue to dump it. So I guess what I'm saying here is don't hold on to that negative stuff, because if you're holding on to that negative stuff, it can screw the mind. And also it just makes you feel pretty damn crap uh, within yourself. OK, so write it, talk it and find a safe way to dump it. And I think with that, you soon learn who your friends are as well, don't you? OK, so that's the first thing I want to say. Now, I'm going to talk about number two, which is, as you can see, is called mind, move, sorry, mind, mood, movement. Now, this is a hypnotic technique, and I'm just going to come back on screen so I can explain, can demonstrate it to you. Let's just get rid of that. There we go. So what you what you do here is and remember with hypnosis, hypnosis is a very it's a creative art. OK, as well as all the subconsciousy stuff that we all talk about as hypnosis specialists, uh, hypnosis is a creative art, creative art in terms of creatively working with the mind. So what you do here is with your palms in front of you. OK, and I sometimes do this with clients is get the palms in front of us and we imagine the negative mood and we put it into we put it into the non dominant hand so let's imagine i'm i'm right handed i'm going to put it in my left hand okay so i imagine in my mind what represents the negativity and i imagine it's in that hand so i'm releasing it out of my head and i'm just dumping it so to speak talk about dumping it i'm actually putting it into my, my into my palm with the power of my mind and that in my palm could be as I look at it, a colour, words, feelings, sounds, it could be anything. If you said to me in your palm that represents negative mood, there's 10 teacups, then that's OK. It doesn't matter what it is. OK, let's imagine I'm, I've got that. I've got the negative mood illustrated in this palm. What I then do with this palm, OK, my dominant hand, is that I imagine in this hand is the reverse. The stuff that represents positive mood. So the colours may be different. So in this hand, it might be very grey and dark colours. And in this hand, for example, it might be bright yellow colours, blue colours, green colours, that sort of thing, right? Or sounds and words. And I allow my mind then to notice the difference between each. Then what I do in my mind, okay, is what I want you to do when you're doing this is I want you to imagine in that hand, in that hand there, in that palm, that that positive mood is building, is expanding, so to speak. Maybe it's even getting noisier. The feelings are getting more intense. There's positive feelings. And then once you've built it up in that hand, those positive feelings and words and sounds and all of that, you then bring it over by the power of your mind, using the mind, and notice that you are going to suppressed down by the power you're making the positive much more power, powerful than the negative and you are bringing those together so the positive what you do then with your mind is i want you to imagine that it is actually melting or crushing if you like the negative mood okay so as you put your hand there and then once you've got your hands like that you look at them both and you imagine through the power of your mind that that is very aspirational, that it's a positive mood. And you notice the feeling sounds, words associated with it. And that becomes a very positive. What you're doing here with your mind is that that is becoming a very positive state in your hands. What you then do through the power of your mind is you bring that slowly towards you knowing that in in the clasp of your hand now is that massively positive mood positive state and you're bringing it to your mind and with and you do it slowly to your head sorry at the side of your mind head and then as soon as it touches the head you then imagine through the power of your mind that you are releasing that positivity okay so you brought it to the side of your mind or the front it doesn't matter 
okay? And you're imagining that all of that positivity then is going in your mind and through every muscle group of your body, through every fiber of your body. And that is what I want you to do. And then what you do as you do this is you deliberately adjust your body posture so that you're stand, sitting, sitting straight. You can do it standing up, but sitting down is better as long as it's safe. OK, so you are bringing that in and then adjusting your body posture and making sure that you are just slapping on the smile and all of those sorts of things so that you, what you have done is you've done a i'm going to call it a hypnotic ritual to change the state to change the state from this gloom mood okay this negative mood to a much more positive state to a much more positive mood okay so Think about doing that because that will help you, and and it can be it can be really quick. It doesn't have to take forever. Make it become part of your your management of mood and use it as a as a ritual, so to speak. Let's get that back on. Okay, so what you've done there is your mind mood movement. You've moved you've moved. Let me get this word that's <laughs> tripping up on the M's. You've moved the mood of your current state to something much more positive. Now, number three, regressive reorientation experience. I'll come back on screen so I can explain this. So here, what you do is you sit in a seat somewhere comfortable. And what you do is you sit up tall, okay? The body language, I'd like you to do that. So it's sitting up tall because I want you to sit successfully. I don't want any relaxation stance where you're, you're sort of, you're, your posture's bent over and all of that. So I want you to be sitting successfully, head, chin slightly up, okay? Have you noticed that when we talk in life, we often say, oh, things are looking down or, you know, I'm looking, you know, when we look up, you know, things are looking up, it's always positive. So what I want you to do to do this particular technique is make sure you're sitting straight, posture, uh, sitting tall, chin slightly up just slightly with a bit of a smile, okay? And what you do is you then close your eyes and then what you do with your mind is you allow yourself to just drift back slowly through the power of your imagination. Before you do that though, what you can do is do a countdown mentally from 10 down to one. And with each descending number, imagine that you are drifting into a very deep state of calm. And do it slowly rather than too speedily, okay? Do it slowly so you're just calming your state down. Then when you've counted down from 10 to 1, what I want you to do is allow your mind to drift back into a time when you were very positive, when you felt very good about yourself. And it's as though I want you to relive it. I want you to maybe see it, what happened back then. I want you to maybe hear the sounds and the feelings and intensify them. Re-experience that brilliant event or, or situation when you felt bloody good about yourself, where your mood was so incredibly positive. What you do once you've drifted back in the power of your mind is you imagine lifting that state, lifting that positive mood up in your mind and bringing it back and bringing it into the current state, all right? So what you've done is you've drifted back, you've counted down 10 to one slowly, you've drifted back to that time when you felt bloody good about you and your mood was strong, your mood was positive about yourself, okay? And then what you've done is mentally brought those resources into the current state, into the present. And what you've done is you've actually allowed yourself to re-experience in the current state that positive mood, okay? So whenever, on a practical level, whenever you are feeling that your mood is low, your mood is agitated, your mood is angry, whatever it is, and you need to readjust it, you, you need a much more constructive state of mood, okay, is to actually use that particular technique. So let's just get back to the slide. So, excuse me, I'm just gonna have a drink of water. So what you've got there are three things in this video that I'm recommending. You write it, you talk it, you dump it, okay? If you become a member of Fat Fatnosis Prime, my academy, by the way, uh, there's lots of opportunity to do that. 
Mind, mood, man, movement. Mind, mood, movement. Remember, one palm is the negative mood. The other palm is the positive mood. Bring them together with the um, positive palm or a uh, mood uh, saturating or crushing down the negative and bring that up to slowly into your mind. And the third one, which I just demonstrated, is the regressive reorientation experience that I'm calling it. Okay. Now let's move move on, move on, move on to managing hot flashes and flushes. And um, ladies over the years have told me that, you know, this, this can be a real issue. And sometimes I think to myself, well, it's okay for me as a, as a guy because obviously I don't um, experience this, but I, I do have a genuine empathy. So what I want to talk about here is a technique you can use to actually manage those moments of hot flash uh, flushes. And just to say that there is evidence, this is based on some evidence that was done by a university that found that hypnosis and hypnotherapy uh, can certainly help to manage this particular symptom. Okay. Um, Baylor University. And um, so, so what I'm going to talk about here isn't uh, poppycock fiction uh, and hippy trippy stuff. This is based also on some evidence based research. Let me talk to you. Let me talk it through with you to help you. So the first thing to say is you find somewhere you do find somewhere that's safe to do this, somewhere you can sit where you're going to be comfortable, not disturbed. And you sit in a seat. Um, and obviously it's safe to continue. First thing you do is you drift into hypnosis. The way you drift into hypnosis is you just allow your eyes to close. You can then allow each muscle of your mind very slowly, allow uh, each muscle of your body, should I say, uh, allow your mind to take your, yourself through a journey of each muscle of your body and allow yourself to suggest that each muscle is becoming more and more relaxed and much more comfortable and calm. And again, don't rush this, allow it to, to go slow. So what you do then is, I'm still talking about number one, drifting into hypnosis. Having relaxed the muscle groups, you then mentally count down from 10 to one, telling yourself that with each descending number, you will go 10% more deeply calm or relaxed, 10% more at ease with yourself. OK, and you slowly count down from 10 to 1. What I recommend you do is that you actually count down, mentally count down each number on every other out breath. OK, so that's uh, that's going to help you drift into what we call um, and well, many call the light trance state of hypnosis. In other words, hypnotic relaxation. The second thing that I want you to do once you've done that is you imagine that you're drifting into your headquarters. So imagine, you know, you've got your eyes closed, you've counted down from 10 to 1. You're then mentally telling yourself that you're drifting into the centre of your mind, which is your headquarters. And if your headquarters uh, can be visualised, that's absolutely fine. So you've moved into your headquarters, and what you're going to do then is move to number 3. So... Number three is where you turn the dial up. Now, I'm moving in here to the actual inverted commas treatment, close inverted commas treatment plan. So you've, I'm just going to recap to help you. So you've drifted into hypnosis, muscle relaxation, 10 down to one. You've then imagined you've moved into your headquarters where you see a dial. And that dial is going to represent heat, okay? The temperature or temperature. It can be heat, you know, hot, cold. It can be what you want. Uh, the more you turn it up, the hotter it is. And the more you turn it down, the, the cooler it is. But you can call it what you want. What you do is you allow yourself, and you can practice this. You can practice this. When you're in your headquarters, you can turn the dial up. Now, if you're turning the dial up just to practice it so that you can understand the, the mind-body connection, is as you're turning it up, you can imagine that you're in front of a hot fire, for example, or the radiator, you're in front of a radiator or your back's, be, you know, your back's to a radiator and you can feel the heat or the sun's on your face and, and that sort of stuff. So you're giving yourself 
um, some stim stim uh, stimulating suggestions, stimulus stuff that actually will help to trigger heat. And, and this is this is just to demonstrate. And then what you can do, and this is where the evidence base comes in, is you can imagine yourself turning the dial right down. And as you turn the right dial, the da dial down into cool, you can imagine through the power of your mind that, for example, you're opening a window and a breeze is blowing in through the window. And imagine the cool breeze, the coolness coming onto your face, onto your neck and throughout your body the coolness. Or perhaps you imagine, for example, that you're opening the freezer door. You know, you know, when you open the freezer and you get that sudden uh, uh, draft of cool, cool air. OK. And so what you're doing there is you are demonstrating to your mind, you're illustrating to yourself that you can actually manage and control to a large degree the heat uh, of what of what happens during this this moment, hot flash flushes. And I what I would recommend is you pra you practice this, okay? And I'll I'll, do, I'll say a few more things in terms of how to use this technique in, in a few moments. Now, once you've done this, okay, so you're learning how you can turn your dial up and turn your dial down. Is the you then once you're ready? Is you open your eyes and before you open your eyes, just letting yourself the all normal. Feelings are returned and you will continue to be able to use the dial technique, so to speak. Now, what I've just described is a process that you can do to begin to recognize that you personally can control, you personally can control the heat. Let me just come back on screen that you personally can control the heat as it happens. Now. In the real world, what what I want you to be to do is knowing that you can control it by doing that particular technique is as soon as a moment of hot flush, hot flash uh, that comes is to just take yourself away. Obviously, keep it safe. I'm not doing this when there's dangerous machinery or certainly when you're driving. No, no, no. But as soon as you notice it's happening. You can take yourself away, sit down, a few deep breaths, 10 down to one quickly, right? Uh, or, or if you're not at the time, just go into your mind and turn the dial down. So on a very practical level, I've just explained that technique to you so you can practice it, yeah? And understand that you have the control over temperature. You can help control the temperature of the, and the intensity of the, the heat that you experience. What you then do, is in the reality of the world is knowing you can do that is you may even as soon as you feel that body temperature increasing just simply sit down close your eyes imagine you've got the dial and turn it down imagining the window at window opening or the cool breeze of the of the or the breeze of the the temperature when you open a freezer or a fan or air conditionings on your face and you're suddenly regaining the control and the evidence is good is quite strong on this okay the research is quite strong on that so practice it practice getting to grips with the technique it may take a little while but you can get to, let's just put it back on actually Not the right one here there you go so so just to recap what i want you to do is Drift into hypnosis, as I explained earlier, mentally move into your headquarters, turn the dial up, turn the dial down before you're opening your eyes and and uh, coming back into the room, so to speak. What you do, what this is, this is a process to prove to yourself and to learn how you can manage, I guess, the temperature and the intensity of heat when you're experiencing the hot flash and flushes. OK, so. There you go. Any questions on that, by the way, just just pop them down below. All right. Let's now move on to something different. Another I want to give you a, a final technique, which is what I'm calling uh, the hypnotic future aspirational protocol. Over the years, many um, ladies have experienced have said to me uh, many things such as what's going to happen to me, I feel like I'm losing everything, life won't be the same, 
uh, it's all over. I, you know, I've I've had many ladies explain to me the kind of fear and the anxiety about the future. Now, anxiety and depression, of course, is, I'll just come back on screen, anxiety and depression, of course, um, can be treated separately as well. And certainly the hypno-antidepressant and the hypno-anti-anxiety that I'm very proud to have been the creator of um, can certainly help you with that particular uh, situation. Now, with this, what you're doing here, let's go back to its title, using the hypnotic future aspirational protocol, is you drift into, into hypnosis again, using doing it the same way as I explained previously, muscle relaxation and 10 down to one. What you then do is you drift into your headquarters, but this time what you're going to do is imagine in your mind that in a few moments you're gonna turn over the page of a book, your book. And this book can have your name on it, okay? Uh, it can have a title if you want it to have a title, your name and your, you know, my life or something, or this is your life, uh, to quote a name of a program from many years ago. And what you can do is you tell yourself that in a moment you're going to turn the page to a brand new chapter. And that chapter will be positive. That chapter will be aspirational. That chapter will be very bright. That chapter will bring opportunity. That chapter will bring fulfillment. I'll come back on, sta on, on stage. I'll come back on the video. That chapter will bring aspiration, will bring positivity, will bring um, feelings of joy, feelings of positivity, feelings of absolute ambition even. It can be anything. And in your mind, as you're doing this technique, you tell yourself that in a few moments, you're going to turn the page over to experience that chapter. Now, what happens here is when you turn over in your mind the absolute uh, the page is you are experiencing the joy of that future, future life, that next chapter. And I have to say, I've always said this, that the best decades for many people are the 50s and your 60s, maybe even the 70s. OK, in this day and age. So what you're doing here, just to repeat is you are taking your mind into the future. And what I want you to do, I want to encourage you to do, is to do this as much as possible because it helps to condition your mind, subconsciously condition as well, that actually what you're experiencing now is it's okay, it's natural, and it's going to be all right. Yes, at times it's a bit of a shit, but actually the future moving forward in terms of your life, in terms of that next chapter, is actually quite exciting. And you can be enthused about it. So when I'm talking about this technique, just to recap, the hypnotic future aspirational protocol, this is about taking yourself hypnotically into a future and conditioning your mind consciously and subconsciously that yes, right now you're managing a stage in life that can be challenging, yes, but you can manage it. And you're going to be taking yourself into one of the most exciting, if not the most exciting chapters of your future. So in this video, what I wanted to do was to give you some of the recommended tools, uh, practical, such as the nutritional recommendations, um, but also introduce you, maybe it's for the first time, to hypnosis and hypnotherapy that now has quite a good, strong evidence base in terms of supporting uh, people that are experiencing the symptoms of menopause. I hope that's been useful. Make sure that if you're watching this on YouTube, that you click the like and you click the subscribe and the bell so that you get notification of when I'm live in the future. OK, live in the future or when I post another video in the future. Right. Any questions, do post them in the comment below and I will be delighted to answer them. On that note, I'll need to know where to turn you off, which is there. And take good care. Bye for now.